are they the best cameras out there or are they just fetishistic art objects? Okay, let's do this. This episode's probably going to have some hot takes in it, and it's probably not going to end where you expect. But I guess you got to stay till the end to find out. Hi, my name is Ben Staley. Welcome to Adventure in Art. Let's get into this, okay? What did the title say? Why Leica? Let's back up. Contrary to popular belief or what you may think by watching this channel, I'm pretty darn camera agnostic. I try not to be swayed by branding, by marketing, by hype, okay? I really do. And yes, I'm human, I'm fallible, and I am able to be influenced by those things to a degree. It's really hard not to be when you see all these new videos and new advertisements and screenshots and specs and man, this camera is really going to change the game for you. Blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I have to restrain myself a little bit. But uh, overall, I am pretty happy and proud to say that I'm pretty darn camera agnostic. Let's back up. Let me tell you where it started for me. The first digital camera I ever, I ever bought was in 2000. And it was a Nikon Coolpix 990. And it was like this sweet rectangular body and it twisted like the lens was on one side and you could hold it weird angles and twist it and it was freaking awesome. I wish I still had it. I dropped it off a cliff when I was rock climbing one time. It was in my bag and my bag fell off a cliff and I sent it to Nikon. They repaired it. No charge. Freaking awesome. I had it for years. I used it, drug it all over the place. Finally, it just quit and I couldn't get it repaired anymore. And so I I think I just chucked it. I wish I kind of wish I still had the body because it was so freaking cool. Maybe I should look on eBay and try and find one. I think I will. I don't know why I hadn't thought of that before. I think I'm going to do that. I love that camera. I think it shot like, I don't know, it was 3.3 million megapixels. Like your phone is so much better, but it was just rad. Anyways, <laughs> I'm so long winded. The next digital camera I bought was a Nikon. D90, I think is what it was. And it was, it came out right before the Canon Mark 5D Mark II. And it was, the Nikon D90 was basically the first DSLR with video. And that's why I bought it, because I'm mostly a filmmaker. And it was freaking rad. I don't think I even have any of that video or that footage anymore to show you, but I shot so much video with that thing and so many rad photos. Had it for a while. It was a great camera. I've always loved Nikons. After that, I went to Micro Four Thirds, Panasonic Lumix, and I bought a GH2. I think they're up to the GH6 now, but I had the first two. And they were hard to get when they came out, and they boasted some of the best video in a small mirrorless camera. And I had a GH2, I had a GH3, I had a GH4. Once I got to the four, I moved on to full frame, but I had those GH, Lumix GH cameras for a number of years, took them all over the world, Siberia, Thailand. Um, some of the footage you've seen on this channel was shot with one of my GH cameras, took, took them to Europe. They're so cool because they're so small. The lenses were small. You could put them in a pocket. And honestly, I shot some insane, awesome portraits with those little, it's basically the, the sensors are like half the size of full frame. But uh, great, awesome little fast lenses. I shot very cool portraits. Did a lot of good work with those cameras. Then I eventually decided I wanted to go full frame again. I went back to Nikon. I think I got a Nikon D. Oh man, I can't remember the names. It was a D810, I think, which was like a pretty pro level camera for them. Had that for a number of years. In between there, I sh I've shot with Canon a lot. I've shot with Sony. I've shot with all the major brands. Honestly, haven't shot with Fuji ever. I don't know. I've never really been like super thrilled about Fuji. All this to say, I am camera agnostic. So 
Why Leica? Okay, in 2015, um, here we go, Mark Twight gave me this M6. I've had it ever since. I've taken this camera all over the world, Peru, Asia, Mexico many times, Alaska more times than I can count. Uh, it's been to Europe, all over. This is my favorite camera of all time. Why? Not necessarily because how of how it works and the pictures I get from it, although some of them are my favorites. Really just the staggering act of generosity of Mark giving me this camera. I freaking love it. And I would play with it and wind it right now, but there's half a roll of film in here that I don't want to lose. Film is so expensive these days. I love this camera. I love that I don't need a battery to use it. It's fully mechanical if I want. I only need a battery for the meter. This is always in my bag. Uh, if I don't take any cameras, I always take this. I love this camera. I'll never get rid of it, even if it stops working, even if they stop making film, even if I stop being able to afford film because it costs $56 a roll or something. Jeez Louise, people. The M6 is my ride or die camera. And uh, on top of that, I do just love the way it works. I love the sound of the lever. I love the sound of the shutter. This was my introduction to Leica. Before that, I hadn't, I was kind of vaguely aware of Leica. I didn't really even know that much about range finders. I didn't know a lot about the history of Leica. I, I, I've never been a camera nerd in the way that I need to be fully informed about everything or up to speed on all the latest gear or the history of cameras. People ask you all the time if you are a photographer, hey, I'm thinking of uh, getting into photography. What's a good entry level camera? I don't know. I don't use entry level cameras. I typically use advanced cameras. <laughs> You probably get that question too. If you've watched this channel, you will know that I got rid of all my cameras except this. All the lenses, got rid of the Nikon I had, got rid of the Sony I had, sold everything, boom, wanted to pare down, bought this guy, the Leica Q2. Why? Typically I was always a longer lens guy, a 50 or an 85 were my favorites. On the Nikon, I had a 70 to 200 that I shot a lot of portraits with and wildlife and things, and I freaking loved those lenses. Why did I get rid of everything for a 28 millimeter? Yeah, I made some videos about that. But being honest, not that I wasn't honest in those videos, but really, really thinking deeply about it, maybe I was swayed a little bit by the hype. Maybe a little bit. No, the truth is I wanted to pare down I wanted to get simple and I wanted to test myself as a photographer and more importantly as an artist. Because honestly, I like to shoot portraits. People are my favorite thing to shoot. And it's real easy to take a 50 millimeter or an 85 millimeter and shoot it wide open and, and crush the back and get shallow depth of field right in the face and make a cool looking portrait. And I, I got pretty good at that and I am pretty good at that. And it's easy and I wasn't challenged. Anytime I had a wider focal length, I had a hard time kind of making environmental type portraits or showing more of the environment or figuring out how to make a composition. It was challenging for me. And I wanted to change myself. I wanted to learn and grow and stretch and I knew it wouldn't be comfortable. And it was not. The first portrait session I had with this I just about vomited. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, what is going on? How do I use this thing? Well, I've had it three and a half years now. I've taken it all over the world several times. Africa, South America, Mexico, Alaska, many, many different states. Ding, 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 ding. I've shot tens of thousands of photos with this camera. And I think I've grown to know how to use it pretty well. I freaking love this camera. I love it. It's an amazing camera. It's an amazing lens. Let's put a pin in that. So then, last summer, I was lent this camera, the Leica M11. Now, I love my M6 so much, but it's film. And I had always, I had borrowed, I actually borrowed my friend's, my friend Mark's Digital M. I borrowed an M10 from the Leica store in LA one time just for a couple days, but I'd never had one for a serious length of time. Now this little guy, I've made quite a few videos with this thing. 
and I haven't really talked about it, but it's just been on loan to me and I have to give it back now. Is that why I'm talking about this? No, I was actually planning this exact video and then I got an email a couple days ago saying I had to send this back and wow, that's just sort of timely. And some things sort of clicked in my head. Well, I guess it just made making this video a little more urgent. I was gonna do a six month review of the M11. I don't think I'm gonna do that now. You guys have seen a lot of pictures that I've taken with this camera. I'm gonna talk about it right now. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my thoughts, but I'm not gonna talk any more about it beyond this video. Who cares? Do I like the M11? Yes. Do I like it a lot? Yes, I like it a lot. I've used it mostly with this Visiflex because I've shot mostly portraits with a variety of lenses. This guy, pretty fancy expensive lens I also have to send back. This guy, which is pretty recent for me, is a 75 millimeter 1.5, which is one of the coolest portrait lenses that I've ever used, fully manual. Definitely gotta have the Visiflex. It definitely slows you down. What do I like about this? I like how small it is and how powerful. I like how it's not cumbersome. Um, I have pretty big hands, but it fits in my hands just right. I like the weight of it. I think if I was gonna buy one of these, I'd probably buy a black one, which is I think a little bit lighter than this. I recently had this in Alaska and I went out to shoot, I would go out when I had free time and drive around to photograph eagles. I would, I would take this 35 millimeter lens, which is on here, put it in my jacket pocket. And I usually have the 75 on here because a little longer focal length to, to shoot eagles with. That's one thing that I love about these M's is I can put the whole darn camera in a large jacket pocket or sling it around my neck and put it under a coat. It was cold in Alaska, I had a big down coat on. But uh, I don't need a backpack, I don't need a sling bag, I don't need anything. I can just put this boom inside my jacket. I can have a spare lens in a coat pocket. I think that's pretty rad. The thing I like about Leica's is their simplicity. There's not all these freaking buttons everywhere for a bunch of things that you don't ever really need or that you might use once or twice. Because I typically get my digital cameras. I set them up, I put the settings where I want, and aside from changing the white balance occasionally, maybe changing the focus settings occasionally, not on these because it's all manual, but beyond that, I'm not going into the menu. I don't need to. I gotta occasionally format a card, but I like all the things I need to do on this are right here at my disposal. The iris is on the lens, easy. The shutter's right here, boom. The ISO is right here, boom. What else do I need to do? I love that. Plus, these cameras are just freaking cool. You feel kind of cool when you're walking around with them. And the pictures, and the lenses. The thing about Leica, and this is the reason that I love the Q2 so much, is that lens, and the M lenses, this very expensive 50 millimeter, this slightly less expensive 50 millimeter Leica that is mine, and then these Voigtlander lenses, which are quite a bit cheaper, but are still freaking amazing. This 35 millimeter F1.2, I love this lens. This 75 millimeter 1.5, insane lens. I've got, uh, what else do I have? I don't even know, oh, it's right here in my bag. I have this 15 millimeter, I love this lens. The Voigtlander lenses, the Leica lenses, they're just special. They're small, uh, they're sharp, they have amazing character. I just like them. The truth is, I don't think, I, I don't wanna say never, but I don't think I'd ever become a Sony shooter again because I don't like their lenses. Their lenses are boring to me. For me, it's more about the glass than the camera. Now, I need a little bit of an emotional attachment to the camera, meaning it needs to work the way that I think, and I need to be able to operate it simply. I like the cleanness. But beyond that, what I'm really looking at are what lenses am I gonna use? Now, of course, I don't have to use Sony lenses on a Sony camera, yes, but the native lenses, which probably work the best, I'm just not thrilled about them. I never have been. Where does this leave us? Oh, check this out. Let me, I wanna show you some pictures, yes. So last week I had, I had this 75 millimeter on and I went to 
shoot a concert, which isn't something that I do. I'm going to show you some pictures. Let me put the 75 on. Where's the little red dot? I don't have my glasses on. I can't see it. Here we go. Boom. I went to shoot a concert with this thing. It was Margot Price, who's an artist that I really, really like. She's a pretty rock star, actually. And I was invited to shoot the concert. And I was I got to be in front of the crowd, in front of the barrier, between the barrier and the stage, so right there. Typically with shows, they give you three songs to be there and then you have to vacate. So I get down there, three songs, it's chock full of photographers. There's like nine or 10 photographers down there, all kind of jockeying for room, trying to get the first three songs. Well, I was given a special bracelet so I could stay there for the whole show. So I basically got to be closer to the artist than anybody else, except there was like two other photographers that also had access down there, pros. Uh, I looked them up later on the IG and on the web. These are folks that are super pro, all shooting with uh, mirrorless cameras or DSLRs, all with super long lenses. Uh, one guy had a SL2, and he he was uh, he kind of gave me the nod, and he comes over and he's like, "Man, you're shooting with that M at a concert. That's pretty cool." It was hard. It was hard because you know rock and roll. They're moving, moving in and out. I'm shooting wide open because I want that shallow look. I pulled it off. I have gotten better with this M camera and this Visiflex. Here's a couple shots from the show. I've taken this thing to Alaska three times in like the last three months. I was in Alaska October, went back to Alaska in November, Went back to Alaska at the end of December and stayed into mid-January and uh, had this thing out in the Bering Sea that last trip. Here's some shots. You can actually get really, really amazing shots with these rangefinders and with these lenses. It's hard, you have to work at it. I think I certainly could have, I don't know, I don't want to say done better. It might have been easier had I had like a mirrorless camera with autofocus, with a, maybe a longer focal length and really fast. But uh, you know, I've learned, I've made it work. Now I'm gonna send the M11 back. That's not to say that it won't make an appearance on the channel later, because I have shot a few things with this that I haven't uh, shown anyone yet. So maybe some of that stuff will rise to the surface, but uh, in reality, I'm not gonna have it anymore. Am I gonna go buy one? I don't think so. You know, this thing is, uh, it's, it's rock solid. They're handmade in Germany. I guess that's why they cost so much. For me, I don't really see the value equaling the price. They're so darn expensive. Now they're cool and it's like carrying around a Gucci handbag. Everybody's like, wow, man, is that a Leica? Is it worth more than $9,000 if you count the Visiflex and everything? For me and what I do, especially my pro work, I don't think so. Now, if I had that money laying around and I would just, just wanted to have one, that would be cool. I've really, I've had several jobs. I've used this on several jobs. I've really kind of honed in on what I need to be doing professionally and the kind of camera that I want. Coming back to the Q2, I've used this on a lot of jobs over the years and uh, supplementing it with other cameras, of course, because, you know, you can't always use a 28 millimeter for everything. I know I've said a lot of times on the channel that I would never get rid of the Q2, that I would keep it forever. But I guess uh, in the last week or so, for some reason, I, w I woke up and it just occurred to me that uh, maybe I should move on from the Q2. Maybe I should shake everything up and get something totally different. And I thought about it for a few days and I was like, what's up Staley? Are you, have you, have you hurt yourself? Did you, did you fall on your head or something? No, I love this camera, but lately I'm feeling like I wouldn't mind having a regular mirrorless camera with a good EVF, with good fast lenses and autofocus so I can do the kind of portraits that I'm best at, that I like doing the most, and I don't have to work so hard. I don't have to use the manual focus of the M. I can get a 
longer focal length than the 28. Lately, I've been really thinking, that's the direction that I want to go. What would I do? Would I get a Leica, a Leica SL2? I don't think so. I've used those cameras. I used them on the SEAL shoot. Uh, I've demoed them before. Uh, I've had friends that have them, so I've used theirs. They're fine cameras. They're great. They're awesome. They're tough. They're tough as nails. They're weather sealed. They have that simplicity, simple Leica controls. Still for the price, I don't really see the value. I don't think that's where I'm going to go. I haven't fully made up my mind, but some things are in the works. And I'm not going to talk about it here and now in this video. Yes, I'm camera agnostic. Yes, I love these Leica cameras. Are they the best cameras out there or are they just fetishistic <laughs> art objects? I don't know. You can decide for yourself. I think they're pretty darn good cameras. This camera's awesome. I've shot some of my favorite pictures of all time with this camera. Same thing with the M, having it only six months. I've shot some epic photos, starting with you know, the seal shoot that I did for Leica last summer. I used his personal M11 and got probably my favorite shots of that shoot. But it's just occurred to me I need to do something different. So I'm going to sell my Q2. Do you want it? If you're interested in buying my Q2, send me an email, bennettbensdaily.com. It's got two batteries. It's got this cool little leather case on it. It's got this cool lens hood uh, that I bought from Thorsten Overgaard. It's got the regular Q lens hood too. It's kind of beat up. It's got a little ding in the top. It's been around the world. It works flawlessly. I've got two batteries. Did I say that already? I don't know. If you're interested in buying my Q2, send me an email. Yeah, hot take, I know. I know you guys didn't expect that. I'm just feeling like uh, 2023, I'm gonna shake things up a little bit. I appreciate you guys staying with me. I appreciate you watching all my silly content. I really do. But you know, everything changes. And that's a good thing. Art is about change. Let's go make some art. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you down the road.